Hello, my name is Michelle Chong, and this is the recording for a presentation at the 22nd American Control Conference for my paper entitled Controller Confidentiality for Nonlinear Systems Under Sensor Attacks. We consider control systems in standard feedback form as shown in this diagram. One of the most well-known vulnerabilities for control system is through its sensors, where the adversary can read and manipulate sensor data with malicious intent. Underlying many attack schemes is the assumption that the adversary has access to the controller state. However, in reality, the adversary only has access to the sensors. Therefore, given that the adversary has access to the signal Y, which is a sensor data, the objective of the adversary to be able to launch a successful attack is to then design an estimator to estimate the states of the plant and the controller. For linear time invariant systems, the common filter was shown to be the adversary's estimator of choice. In this study, we consider nonlinear plants and nonlinear controllers, whereby the detectability property assumed in a linear case no longer holds and hence existing results are no longer valid. In particular, we consider a nonlinear plant and nonlinear controllers, whereby the dynamics FP and FC are locally Lipschitz and the output map of the plant is sufficiently smooth. We also assume that the control law is locally Lipschitz. Under these assumptions, there always exists a unique solution for the closed loop system. We assume that the adversary operates under these conditions, whereby the adversary knows the signal Y and knows the dynamics of the plant and its output map, as well as the dynamics of the controller and its control law. Thirdly, the adversary does not know the input U, which is the output of the controller. Neither does the adversary knows the initial states of the plant or the controller. The objectives of the adversary is to estimate the states of the controller while maintaining stealth. To be more precise, we rewrite the closed loop system in this particular form and assume that the controller has been designed such that the closed loop system is semi-global asymptotically stable, which is to say that if the initial conditions of the closed loop system lies within a delta x ball, then the tra trajectories of the closed loop system has to satisfy this particular property. To achieve stealthy estimation, the attacker has to achieve two objectives. The first one is to be able to estimate the controller's true state. And the second objective is to maintain stealth, that is, to ensure that the closed loop system is semi-global practically stable. By that, we mean that if the initial condition of the closed loop system is within a smaller bowl, then the trajectory of the closed loop system has to remain within a larger bowl that contains the smaller bowl at all times. When both objective one and two have been met, then we say that the adversary has achieved stealthy estimation. In the nonlinear case, detectability of the closed loop system may not always hold. In this paper, we showed that the adversary strategy for the scenario where the closed loop system is detectable is different to the case where the closed loop is not detectable, where a more involved scheme has to be employed. We first examine the case where the closed loop system is detectable. By that, we mean that there exists a function L with L0 is 0, such that the estimate x hat generated by this dynamical system, otherwise known as the attacker's estimator, satisfy the property highlighted in blue, which says that the estimate of the closed loop system has to converge asymptotically to the true state of the closed loop system. A crucial observation here is that since the attacker injects or knows the signal A of T, the attacker can use A of T in its estimator, and hence we can achieve asymptotic stability of the attacker's estimation error. Therefore, we can show that when a closed loop system is taxable, the attacker can achieve stealthy estimation with no injection of any attack signal. We now consider the case where the closed loop system is not detectable. 
To do so, we'll employ a probing scheme, which was inspired by the dwell mode probing scheme by Shimantu in 2003. And the idea is as follows. A non-zero finite time interval defined by capital T is predetermined. Details about how to choose this duration will be described later in the talk. Then for a short time interval, we apply a probing signal Y star to the closed loop system. During this time, we induced a desired observability property such that we can design an estimator that converges quickly within the allotted time with desired accuracy. For the remainder of the interval, we turn off the probing signal to maintain stealth. For the remainder of this talk, we'll dive into the details that make this scheme work. Firstly, onto the choice of the interval capital T. We note that the closed loop system can be written in this particular form highlighted in blue, where we have a nominal part that we know to be semi-global, asymptotically stable, and a perturb perturbation term captured by D of T, whereby D of T is defined to be the difference between the probe dynamics and the nominal dynamics during the probing period and zero otherwise. We can then choose this duration capital T such that the disturbance delta D of T has a robustness property detailed in our paper so that the closed loop system is semi-global practically stable. This was proven thanks to the framework by Colette Shimantil in 2003. Next, we examine the probing duration. The adversary probes the closed loop system to induce a robust observability property, which we call Q robust observability property within the short time interval zero and T star. By that, we mean that there exists a probing signal Y star such that the solution X of T to the probe closed loop system exists. Secondly, a map capital Psi that maps the clean unmanipulated sensor data and all its time derivatives, as well as the probing signal and its time derivatives up to Q times to the true states of the closed loop system. Thirdly, we assume that if the error provided by the estimator Y hat and the vector of clean sensor data and its time derivative is small, then the error generated by the map would remain small. Details on the design of this estimator Y hat can be found in the paper. With the design of the estimator Y hat that's given in our paper, the adversary then obtains an estimate of the controller and a plant state as follows using the mapping defined earlier. With all the design choices that were introduced in the previous few slides, we can guarantee that the adversary can achieve stealthy estimation. We first dissect the estimation guarantee. The first feature to notice is that the adversary can achieve a desired estimation accuracy within the probing period. And this is achieved by choosing theta, which is a design parameter within the estimator to be large enough. A consequence of that is that the estimation error over both the probing and non-probing periods, which is described by this inequality here, becomes large as the first term here is dependent on theta. Another feature to note is that the estimation error at the end of the non-probing period is dependent on epsilon x tilde. Epsilon x tilde becomes large as t, which is the duration of the dual mode scheme, is large. And all these results hold for the fact that the initial condition of the closed loop system lies within a delta x ball. Finally, we see that with all the choices regarding the duration of the probing and the duration of the dual mode scheme, we can show that 
Stealth is still maintained in the sense that the closed loop system remains semi-global, practically stable. In summary, we have shown that, an, that the adversary can stealthily estimate the plant and controller state by reading the sensors only when a closed loop system is detectable. When this property no longer holds, the adversary has to employ a more advanced scheme of a dual mode probing scheme via the sensors. The idea behind that is to choose a duration that is long enough in comparison to the probing time such that stealth can be maintained. Further, during the probing time, the adversary has to design an estimator that is fast enough such that a desired accuracy can be achieved during the probing period. These results were shown by, were inspired and shown by the two references listed on this slide. In the future, we intend to design obfuscation schemes to preserve controller confidentiality. Thank you for your attention.